<laughs> it's not E3, but it is E3. This is when E3 would be. And so a lot of companies are doing little online presentations anyway. And you would have to be under a rock to not know that PlayStation just had their event and it was. And I am, I am, I am not over exaggerating. I am not overstating one of, if not the best gaming presentation I've ever seen. Not only did almost like 99% of the games shown in this presentation have gameplay shown running on the PlayStation 5, but there was like at least 10, we'll count them as we go, new game announcements. Okay, clearly I'm very excited. I wanna go through this event. I did just live stream it with you guys, so if you hung out with me, thank you for having a fantastic time with me. I'll leave a link down below to the, sh the full stream. What is that? What is that? What is that? What the heck is that? It's got fins. Uh, we're gonna skip straight to the end. Through this entire event, we were all on waited, bated breath, waiting to see what the PlayStation looked like. They showed us the controller, which we've already kind of seen. It looks kind of weirdly cool. It looks like, what's that Android game? Beyond. I think it was Beyond. <laughs> I don't know, the whole look of the PlayStation 5 controller and the console looks like that game Beyond with the Androids. There's something about it that's like, almost they're trying a little, too hard to make it look futuristic, but in saying that, I like it. I hope the controller comes in different colors, but I like it. Two designs, there's a really nice, slim, uh, symmetrical design that's discless, because all digital, so they're going that route. And then the one that has a disc tray, the one I'll be buying, and presumably will be about 50 bucks more expensive because it has a disc tray, is kind of, it kind of ruins that <laughs> symmetrical elegance by having a, a disc tray, like, drawn it off to the side. They also showed that there is a, a official headset, I guess, for the console, as well as a remote media player, because this one, this PlayStation, will have a Blu-ray player in it because I think Sony have given up on trying to sell those separately because it's 2020. <laughs> Who's buying Blu-ray players? And a camera. I'm really excited. Uh, obviously, I was already going to pick it up, but I mean, if I was even on the fence a little bit, this event that we're about to go through completely sold me. There was some incredible incredible looking games and, and sequels and so much going on. I do want to note that I guess you can't lie this uh, paper plane, fin, airplane uh, c a console down. I guess it stands up only and I mean I get why everything's going the tower route. It's better for airflow and these machines are, are much beastier than the previous gen but I guess it's a small problem that we're all gonna have to work around to enjoy some great games. And I just want to thank all of you again for the insane support on the channel lately. In fact, speaking of support... If you want to... If you want to continue supporting the channel, I'd appreciate it if you supported today's sponsor, uh, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes. Favorite class I've taken was Geordie's class on Adobe After Effects. I learned how to do this. Yeah, you're jealous now. You could take the same course and you could learn how to do the exact same thing. If it worked, I don't know, I might screw it up. There's classes on film and video, graphic design, creative writing, and everything you could imagine. Kimberly, how affordable is Skillshare? All right, can you just say it, please? Oh, I thought you were just gonna dump it <laughs> no. in later. Very. Very affordable at less than $10 a month. That's actually super cheap considering how much you can learn. And for the first time, they're offering two months free to you guys, but only to the first 1,000 of you that go to the description and click my specific link. So you love Skillshare. Can we please get your honest thoughts on Skillshare? How could you say no? to a face like this. All he wants is for you to click that link below. That's all he wants in life, that and scratches. So, I've got the scratches covered. The rest is up to you, baby. All right, cool. Thanks, Skillshare, for sponsoring. Let's get back to the video. Okay, let's start. The event kicked off with a massive bang as it went through the years of PlayStation, and it actually started with that audio cue from the initial PlayStation 1 when you booted up, and that 
hit me right in the heart. I was actually a little excited because I thought maybe this would be announcing backwards compatibility for all of this, but it was more just to look through the ages, which I still appreciated, and we still don't know too much about backwards compat, but I assume it's not really going to do it. Uh, I was a little worried right as it started because it started with GTA 5, which is such a weird way to start the event, but I do understand what they're going for. They are porting it, I guess. They're putting it on PlayStation 5, and it's kind of a remaster, but not really. It'll, I, I guess it will just look and play better because it's on the PlayStation 5. We saw that and I was like, oh, do they not have anything to show other than GTA? Like, what else is gonna be? But from there, it was just a roller coaster. Uh, next up, uh, this this nice looking guy said a bunch of stuff. To be honest, I couldn't really pay attention. I was way too focused on the fact that he looks like Gordon Ramsay. But that actually led into a new Spider-Man game built with the same engine as the Spider-Man PS4 game we just had. This time you play as Miles. Really cool. I think a lot of us that played the original game saw that coming. That original game being in my top five favorite PlayStation 4 games. Then we got to look at Gran Turismo. And while I do not care for racing games, and I especially don't care for Gran Turismo, I'm sorry, this is where the event really started to show off what the PlayStation 5 was capable of. No words were spoken, nothing needed to be said. We just watched someone race around a track for a couple minutes and I was in awe. Now, in my opinion, the next game, the new Ratchet and Clank game, might have been the most impressive thing we saw in this event. I'll have to watch through it again and, and see if it changes my mind, but hear, hear me out and here's why. On top of the fact that, A, it's Ratchet and Clank and the last game was super fun, B, the game looked visually gorgeous with so many lighting effects, explosions, uh, things breaking everywhere, just so many assets blowing up on the screen at once. This, this, this freaking new SSD in the PlayStation 5 working at a mile a minute is really cool to see. But the most incredibly exciting thing, which I think might be easy to miss for a lot of people, is watching in real time in the gameplay, Ratchet and Clank leap through these dimensions. That in itself is showcasing exactly what this new hardware can do, exactly what this SSD and this processor can do. It might seem like a small thing, but what usually happens in a game like Ratchet and Clank when you want to leave a world and go to another world? You have to sit through a load screen, probably a pretty lengthy load screen. In real time, it's switching from world to world to world to world in an instant without having to load anything. Well, that's really what this whole showcase was for. Not really, well, yeah, to show us the games and what we can be excited to play, but to show us what PlayStation 5 can do. And in my opinion, this showcased it perfectly, and it was the first time we've really seen what this thing can do. And I'm really excited for th this game just looks so good. Oh, I love this. I miss E3, man. It's, oh, I know it kind of sucked, but it was fun doing this. Let's keep going. <laughs> I need another, I don't know when the next one is. I need another one of these. Ubisoft, where are you at? Let me see that Ubisoft event. Next, we got to look at a new Square Enix game called Project Anthea. And this game looks gorgeous, but reminds me of that tech demo we just saw from PlayStation, which isn't a bad thing. You're seeing that world building here. You're seeing the dynamic lighting effects and the atmosphere. This next one, I, I, I don't care what it is. They had me sold at kitty cats wearing backpacks. Jumping ahead a little bit because of this next one, we had two games in this event that seem to deal with time loops. The first game had some really cool looking gameplay that immediately reminded me of Mass Effect. We didn't really learn much about the game other than this person seems to be stuck on time loops and they keep dying and then every time they come back to life the world looks different. But either way, some really beautiful set pieces here. Again, those freaking lighting effects. I can't I can't stop on them. Little Big Planet. I loved the original Little Big Planet, but for some reason after that one I couldn't really get into the other ones. Typically in Little Big Planet, it's a it's a 2D platformer where you help create and shape the world. You can even build your own levels and be very creative with it. This looks a little less like you can create things. In fact, from what I could tell, you don't really create anything. This is a standalone 3D platformer, and it looks really good. It reminds me so much of Mario games and Mario Odyssey. Little Big Planet has always had really good level designs, so I'm excited to see their take on a 3D platformer. The next one, the writing is on the wall to me with what they're going for here. A lot of companies trying to make that next big game. Want the next one that blows up, kind of like Fortnite, you know, Overwatch, Rocket League, and sometimes, rather than creating something new, a lot of these companies will take elements from the popular games and kind of smash them and smoosh them into one. And I 
think that's what we're seeing here in this destruction derby game. Hey, it might work. This actually could be really fun. Oh, the next game can heck right off because too adorable. You have these tiny little adorable furballs. You have this charming world. This art style, very adorable. The world ex- I cannot get over those freaking little adorable things. Oh my gosh, look at them helping, carrying. Anyway, I'm sorry. That one transition from like the dead world to immediate life that was so smooth. Um, the next one, I really have no idea what's going on. It kind of gave me Life is Strange vibes. A cartoony style with a bunch of anamorphic uh, humans. Who knows? Could be good, could be, I don't know. Who knows? I played the original Oddworld back in the day. I was never a huge fan, but I, even I got excited looking at this trailer and seeing Oddworld. It looks like it plays exactly like the old game, but just beautiful. The next one was on a, in a league of its own as far as in this event. It just, it's so out there and original looking. So you play in Tokyo and I guess you have to sa save Tokyo. There's creepy headless schoolgirls running around the streets. Slender Man makes a guest appearance. And then the way it plays is like a, a an FPS, but you have all these different spells and melee attacks, super fast pace and a gorgeous looking city. And I don't want to keep repeating myself but the lighting effects and the atmosphere. The next one is baffling. It has some really cool looking set pieces, um, but I, I don't have any idea what kind of game this could be. My chat was speculating during the stream, but yeah, I honestly don't know. Then we got to look at the new Gearbox game, Godfall. And while we can't tell much about the total scope of the game, I guess, it was a ton of gameplay showing off a load of weapons, which isn't surprising from a company like Gearbox. You know they love having a large array of crazy weapons and a bunch of hack and slash gameplay that kind of reminds me of monster hunter just because of the wide variety of different weapons and a lot of the way the the, the attacks are animated you guys know i love my indies you guys know i loved hyper light drifter that team has made a new game and it looks like they've really upped the ante with the visual style and the style of game they've created we only got a teeny tiny bit of gameplay but tell me that this sliding and skating doesn't look smooth. And then we have a Breath of the Wild reminiscent screenshot of them coming and stepping out into this world, but it twists your expectations and it, it moves the world around. You see the title Solar Ash. This new Hitman game had a cinematic trailer. No gameplay for this one. And we also didn't get a release date for the, I should have said this earlier, but we didn't get a release date, at least not in the event for the PlayStation 5 and we didn't get a price for it. If we had had those two things, this event would have been perfect. Astrobot is getting a non-VR sequel kind of game. This actually reminds me of the Lucky Tail situation where uh, this dev team made a really fun game in VR. I feel like that's what happened here with Astrobot. Astrobot is easily the best PlayStation VR game. Like that game is incredible. Obviously reworked it and they've made a, a normal standalone platformer. All right. Finally, this next one, I think me and my chat lost our minds at this one. I think this one took us all by surprise. Initially, I loved the art style, but I was kind of unsure going into it. You know, you see this really charming art style, a couple of really cool shots start taking place, but then they start showing the scope of the world and it's not what you'd expect. You kind of expect the world to be cartoony, kind of like the main character, sort of 3D and blocky, but then you see it and it's so strikingly beautiful and realistic with these light cascading through the trees, the sand blowing and pillowing behind and this Mad Max looking scene. Really high expectations for this game just based on what I've seen and I think it's at this point in the trailer, my favorite one. Then I look at the new NBA game, very realistic looking, not a big fan of basketball, not a big fan of sports. So we might just breeze on past that one, but I'm sure a lot of you are excited. You also might remember I reviewed Octodad, a uh, very, again, a very unique game where you play as an octopus. That same team has obviously taken a lot of creativity and uniqueness into their new game. It's called uh, B Bug Bug Fruits, I think. I can't remember. <laughs> you have to give them respect here for thinking outside the box and coming up with a new unique idea. We started to get these really awesome shots of a mountain and this like beautiful forest range, this river going through trees. And I was like, hmm, could this be Horizon Zero Dawn 2. And then you sit through the rest of this gorgeous looking cinematic trailer and you get to Demon Souls. Oh, so now we're at the other time loop game. This one is made by Bethesda and it has an interesting gimmick. 
So the entire world apparently is set out to kill you and you need to keep going through loop after loop trying to survive. But the big gimmick here is that there's another character stuck in the loop. I think it would be more fun if it was player versus player and there was also NPCs in the world trying to get you both, but I don't know, I guess we'll see. A lot of people had a pretty good feeling we would see Resident Evil 8 and and we did and it looked very creepy and i was too much of a baby to play resident evil 7 past going into that first shack so i probably won't play this one either but chris was in it near the end and he something seems wrong with him so that was intriguing oh guys there was so much in this event i'm trying to blast through it my throat hurts <laughs> spaceman in new york i don't know what's going on but he has a little android kid they get ripped out of new york and thrown on the moon were they were they ever actually on new york in the first place i don't no, but this game looks psychotic and I'm excited to see how it plays. So I really thought that that, that other game was going to be Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Here I am watching a couple of cute crabs picking at a fish completely unaware of what's about to happen and then Alloy rips past <laughs> right in her way to glory. Uh, completely no surprise to anyone with this being one of PlayStation's newest flagship IPs. This game looks like it's had a lot of love, a lot of attention, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I don't think there's anyone uh, who isn't excited to play it, so let's just keep going. Oh, actually, let's not keep going, because that was the end. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that was the last thing. What do you guys think? Honestly, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'm not playing. I'm not lying. I thought it was really great. If there is any more events that happen, I will do my best to stream them on the channel, to cover them in a video, and to maybe have a Twitch after party, which we are having right now. Or just follow me there for the next time I'm live. I appreciate you all. Thank you for allowing me to stand here and gush over something that I really loved. And I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye.